Okay, traders, this is uh, beginning class lesson two. And uh, don't forget that nobody's told you you can make $3 million in two weeks in here. The possibility exists you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment. Never invest any money you cannot afford to lose and be aware of all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek the advice of an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. So lesson two consists of the following. Times we need to be trading, harmony and momentum and how that's depicted in our charts, T30s, moving averages, and then trends. We're going to spend most of the time on trends here. So let's just take it uh, quickly. We have a lot to do on trends, so we'll get through this first part really easy. All right, the only time you want to trade is when you have an overlapping market. And you can see there's an overlapping market with the uh, Asian market right in here, the beginning of London, the edge, end of this, okay? And actually over here, you, also, you actually have the Sydney market right here. So you have the Aussies and the New Zealand, the Kiwi boys all here. So we have an overlapping market in the beginning of the end market. We have an overlapping market at the end of the Asian, the beginning of the London. And about 4.30 in the morning Eastern time, London will go to sleep and won't wake up until 9 o'clock in the morning when the USA market opens. And the reason, although the market opens earlier than 8.30, we talk about 9 o'clock. Why do we do that? Because in the US market, there are option contracts expiring. They're called plain vanilla options. They expire at the New York cut, which is actually 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time, and the market will rarely moves before that. Uh, they're waiting for the option contracts to expire, and they also like to see the sentiment from the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P. All right, so you want to execute trades in overlapping markets. You want to manage trades in markets that do not have overlapping. All right, so. Harmony has a way of creating momentum. When all the charts say the same thing, uh, it, it helps to see, uh, you'll be able to see momentum. Let's go take a look at a chart here and I'll show it to you. Uh, okay, here, I'm on the dollar CAD right here. All right, you notice this move right here? See how strong this move was here? Well, look at, there's what harmony looks like. Harmony, harmony. Charts are all saying the same thing back here and back here. Remember, these are smaller time frames, 10 and 30. All right? So the charts are showing you this move because there's harmony for this move, which brings momentum in the charts. We see momentum as bright red uh, neon candles to the downside or bright green neon candles to the upside. All right? <clears throat> so when you have harmony and you have momentum, you probably have a pretty good opportunity for a move. So that's already depicted in the charts. It's just pretty simple to see that, okay? All right, let's take a look at T30s. T30s are based on the pivot point. Now, a lot of traders pay, trade pivot points. Big traders trade pivot points. Uh, uh, in fact, because big traders trade and we pay attention to them, but uh, most of us are not swing traders, which is what uh, pivot points uh, depict. All right, so on your charts, you're going to see this right here, and you're going to see these lines, these little lines going up. Let me go to a wild card where there's nothing on it. Let's go to the euro here, and we put this down here, and... and uh, Oh, where are they? Hold on. Let me pop them here. Okay. So you see here, this is the grid base. This is the pivot point. Okay. Above here, they're they're moving up. Okay. And they're trying always trying to get to the pivot point. When they get to the pivot point, uh, then they might back off. If they break up here, ultimately they want to come back down to the pivot point. Now every day at five o'clock, we recalculate automatically. The software does that and figures out the power point for the next day. It happens around five o'clock every night, every day, Eastern time. You might be sitting in your charts and all of a sudden all these lines move. You go, what was that? Well, we automatically do that for you, okay? So uh, the, the, we build a grid every 30 pips straight up and straight down from the pivot point. You see it go a long, long way up and a long, long way down, okay? And you'll see how the market knows exactly where these lines are. See how they know where the lines are? See, right in here, all right? They, they have a tendency to move to these lines. And the reason for that is their T30 stands for a 30 pip target, 30 pip target, all right? And it's based on the Fibonacci sequence, which is 21, 34, 55, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, big boys trade for 55 pips. That's why we look for that white dot and 55 pips. That's what we look for, all right? But in our world, uh, the little small retail world, 
34 pips is the Fibonacci sequence before that. All right, if you take the spread out, you got 30 pips. And so we measure these, these for you to see. Now, in, in terms of trading to a target, I'll just quickly do this real quick. So if we were going to trade this to the downside, I'm just going to put an HSI on here quickly. And you can see that these would be places that you would, you can see the market knows where the HSI is, stops here, stops here, stops here, stops here. So it knows where that is. All right, it knows exactly where they are. But notice when they break down here, they go to this T30, they go to this T30, and then this T30. There are three T30s or 90 pips right in here. Notice how they respect it all all of those right each one of those can become the bounce point as you see right there there's a bounce point let me draw it again for you so as you're coming down you got a big 90 pip move right in here and they know where that is a little pullback to come down here to this one right here and then we have a big pullback okay <clears throat> that's your opportunity to uh to buy again by the way all right and as they come back down they go right to the t30 and right to the t30 all right so every one of these as you're trading to the downside in this example or if you're trading up in this example are places you can move your stop in route to the target so it's already there for you uh, it just it's there to help you become a better trader all right so back to the powerpoint all right, let's talk about moving averages. All right, a static moving average is one that doesn't move, okay? So the, a moving, an average of one to 10 is five because it's not moving, okay? But in a moving average, what happens is the moving average drops the last, can, the last candle it's holding onto and adds the current present, all right? So the 240 minute chart is six times slower than the 60 minute chart, all right? So the, uh, don't make a moving average cross over your go-to setup. It only works in a trending market and that is only 30% of the time, okay? So let's take a look at these uh, moving averages on our charts and you'll quickly understand them. All right, so you can see here, the red moving average that we're showing here. Uh, hold on, where'd my little drawer go? There we go. All right. The red moving average that you see right here, okay, is a 240 minute moving average. You see it's starting to turn to the downside. Now, the 60 minute is six times faster. So you see what it's doing. It's showing you this. That's how we get the desert. We've already discussed that, okay? So uh, what, what you're seeing is that the moving average is telling you direction, all right? So that's what it's telling you. And when you get up, I'm on a 10 minute chart here, but when you get up to a 240 chart, there are many, many times that the, the moving averages will reflect the actual trend that's happening here. All right? See how the, they're moving up, they're moving up, okay, we're moving up. So you see they, they, they really help you, all right? So moving averages are really big. Do not trade a moving average crossover. A moving average crossover is suicide. All right, a moving average crossover works really, really good in a trending market, but that only happens 30% of the time. 70% of the time, the moving uh, the market is not trending. So if you trade a trending setup in a market that's not trending, you're going to get bashed. All right, all right. So that's moving averages here. So uh, not a lot to talk about here. All right. So here's a little picture. Uh, what do you see here? You look at this picture. What do you see? Well, most people will say we see a young girl. All right, and I can certainly see that young girl. But some of you will see the old lady. Here's her eye, here's her nose, here's her chin, here's her mouth, and her chin, okay? So that's kind of an illustration of what uh, trends are like. Uh, some people look at it and say it's an uptrend, and other people look at it and say, no, it's a downtrend. So that's the real problem. How do we determine what that is, all right? So we're gonna spend most of our time on trends, all right? So if we have a candle sitting over here and we look left to right, okay, uh, right to left, I should say, we can see that this high, number one, is lower than uh, the high of number two. Number two is higher than, is lower than number three, okay? So these are called resistances, and when that occurs, we have a downtrend on a 240-minute chart. Uh, very important to understand that a trend is only found on a 240 chart or larger. You can have a day chart trend, a weekly trend, all that kind of thing, but there's no such thing as a trend on a 60-minute chart. <clears throat> if we look here over to the, uh, from right to left, we, and we're, the mark, market appears to be going up, you can see that support one is higher than support two, so our two is higher than support three, all right? So what does that mean? That means we are trying to trend to the upside, all right? Now, it takes two points to develop a trend, but it takes a third to confirm it. If you have two points, you may have a trend, you also may not. And it's very important to know that it doesn't have to actually touch the trend line. You just have to be making a higher, a lower high if you're going down or a higher high, all right? 
So let, let's take, I'll show it to you in the charts. <clears throat> so in an uptrend, when the chart is establishing higher lows and higher highs, all right, we got to have at least uh, at least two points and possibly three. So in this case, we got one and two. We have a start of a trend. When we get two up here, right here, the third point, we now know that we're trending to the upside, all right? If we don't have this set, this third point down here, we don't know that we have a trend, all right? <clears throat> so. Uh, those are support points, and we'll trade that in an up market as long as they'll let us. All right? So here's a hint to confirm a trend is in effect. A tradable trend is in effect when price is consistently above or below the moving average on both the 60-minute and the 10-minute wildcard screen. When we have harmony and that is followed through on the 10 minute chart, we get RF 1010s, poles, and wildcards because that's what they're doing is bringing the momentum is coming in to create those setups. All right. Now we've already done this for you and I'll show that to you in just a minute. Okay. So uh, here it is. <laughs> so here's an example. Okay. Here we have a four, a two, four, this is a 240 minute trend going down like this. So the 240 says you're going down. This is the 60 minute. Okay, it's also going down. All right, so we have a downtrend and we have a 60 minute going down. All right, but you say, Oh, well, yeah, but you're inside the desert. Well, we don't care about the desert on the 60 minute chart, we don't care one bit about that. All right, but when we get to the 10 minute, we will. All right, so we know that the direction is to the downside. Now, this is the very same area down on a 10 minute chart, and you can see all of the are uh, the signals you got over here to make a trade we only got one or two signals in here because as you can see they're basically going flat but they're going flat in a down move and then they resume the trend to the downside this is a good example of where if you trade a moving average crossover in here you're going to get whacked all right so when the 10 minute moves in conjunction with the 60 minute which is in conjunction with the 240 guess what we're going to have movements in that direction most likely all right so and you can see in this case we are out, we were out of the desert. We were in the desert here, over here, we're out of the desert. All of this and all of this, here's the desert right up in here. That's the desert area. So we're moving away from the desert, which means we're trying to trend. Okay, so there you go, you can see them. All right, so the trend is determined by the 240 minute chart and occasionally the day chart, right? But it's proven when the 60 minute corroborates it. The trend of the day is then the 60 minute chart, and we call this the real estate of the day. Okay, so here's an example, right? So you can see we have lots of different moves. The overall trend is down, right? But you can see we have down moves and up down, and down moves, up downs, up moves, down moves, up to up moves. Okay, the trade you want to be trading is when the currency is trending on the real estate of the day, 60 minute chart to the downside in harmony with the day chart, the 240 minute chart. This is what wax traders is trying to trade that stuff right in there. All right. It makes a turn. Now we have an easy trade. There's a pole trade right there, a break to the downside there. And now we hit the bottom. It's time to go back. All right. Now I want you to notice that in this case, we only have one and two points right here. All right. So we only have two points. We have a working trend. Where do we get the third point? Right here. All right. We have a lower high. You see, when this came down, came back up here and went down, we still use the trend line across these two points, but we're officially in a downtrend. All right. Now, the one thing that traders don't understand is you have to do several things to do a trend. One of them is it has to be uh, anchored on resistance. It has to be anchored on support. And then you must, the currency must prove the heart line inside the channel, right? They have to prove that they know where that is, all right? If you can prove that heart line right there, then you can see that you have, you can go with the trend. <coughs> all right, so we're gonna do some charts here in just a minute, but I'm gonna show you an illustration of how to trend, all right? So I had to come up with a way to think about it, okay? The 240 minute is your compass, okay? So uh, for instance, I live in Texas, all right? I, if I go north, I wanna go north I can't, uh, to Chicago, I can't get there by going south. I have to go north, okay? So I have to find a direction north. However, if I go directly north from my house, I will not hit Chicago. I will hit Fargo, North Dakota, all right? An example of that, if you live in London, I live in London, I want to go north to Blackpool. You will not go, if you go directly north, you're going to end up in Scotland. If you go uh, to, on a northern route, to Blackpool, you'll get there, all right? So there's a couple of uh, illustrations there, all right? So once I've determined the trend, the 240, I know the direction, but then I gotta find a freeway, a road that is built to that target, 
or destination. That's a 60 minute real estate of the day. But how do you get on a freeway or the M1 in, in London, for instance, okay? You've got to have an entrance. And the 10 minute is how we enter on the trade. Do not ever enter on a five minute chart. A five minute chart has the most uh, false positives of any chart there is. And that is one of the reasons why it is not the default uh, chart on MT4. You can have a five and you can have a 15, but you got to create a 10, all right? So, another example here. Overall trend is down, but how can we tell that? Okay, well, we got one, no, one and two. No, but there we get three. See, we're making lower highs. We come off the top here, anchored on a, re on a resistance. We bring this back and actually come back into the air, probably to that one right there, support, all right? And down we go. Do they know the heart line? 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 Yes, they do. So when they turn over here, we now know we got an absolute trend because now we have one, two, and three. All right? Doesn't mean we can't trade in here. We can, as long as we get a lower high. See? All right. So the real estate of the day, this is the trade you want to take. This is the one you want to stay out of. All right? This is the mess right here because any one of these can turn to the downside. If you try to buy, you're going to be in trouble. All right? So, the trend of the day is what you want to find in harmony with the overall trend. That's the trend of the day. All right, so here we are over here. Which way would we trade? We would trade to the downside, right? We're looking for the real estate of the day to turn to the downside so that we can trade once again to the downside, right? So, once again, there's a 60 minute inside of 240. You can see the real estate of the day. You can see the real estate of the day here was up. All right. The real estate of the day here was down. The real estate of the day is down, but the overall trend is down. See? All right. So you got, you, you don't get them mixed up. You don't go down on a 60 minute chart and say, this is the trend. See, that's what a lot of traders do. There's a trend. No, that's a channel to the downside inside the overall trend. All right. Okay. Then when the 10 minute gets in harmony with it, then we'll start to see momentum come into the market as they rock and roll this thing down to the downside to the target. All right. We're going to do some charts here in just a second. So, All right, so let's do some charts and we'll show you how to do this. All right. So I'm going to go up here to, uh, let's go. <coughs> mm. <laughs> go to the odds. Now, odds is going sideways right now. Go to New Zealand and see what she looks like. All right, All right. <coughs> now. I want to go on a 240 chart and you can see something really clearly, right? Right now, the moving average is going down, the moving average is going down. So you can see they're trying to trend to the downside, all right? But this is not the trend, okay? Because one of the things that a trend has to be is it has to be no greater than 45 degrees, all right? There's a 45 degree angle. So a downtrend, look on your watch and if the angle of, of the movement to the downside is 10 to four, that's less than 45 degrees. If it's greater than that, like that, it, that's not a trend. It's not sustainable. And an uptrend, it's eight o'clock on your watch to two o'clock. If it's greater than that, it's not sustainable. They will correct it. Right? So anything greater than these angles cannot be sustained. All right, so you can see that can't be the trend. That can't be the trend. So what is it? All right, so I'm gonna scroll it back here. All right, and you can see that in reality, we're doing a big uptrend, all right? Well, but the moving averages are going down, all right? Well, oops, sorry, we're not doing it. We made a lower low here, see that, a lower low, all right? So this trend actually goes back further, way back up here, all right? Let's get off there, that's a big, nasty one. Let's go to, uh, oh, let's go to the British pound here, all right? Wow, there's a nice looking move, that's on a 10 minute chart. Let's go to the 240, what's the 240 look like? Let me put, take everything off of here. All right, and we'll scrunch it down so we can see the move. All right, so where's what is the trend? All right, if I auto scale this right here, I right click and auto scale this, it's going to give me a much better angle. Is this 10 to 4? All right, 11, 12, all right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You see that? 10 to 4. All right, so well, there's the trend. All right. So I'm going to pop across the top here. All right. I'm going first off of this 
these two points right here, one and two, that gives me the trend right there, one and two, click there, right? Now, I've got it anchored on a, on a resistance, I now got to find my support. Well, there it is right there, click it. All right, now, do they know the heart line? That's the next question. Do they know the heart line? 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 You see that? Do they know the heart line? They know the heart line, all right? So we now know, now know that if this is a return to the downside, okay, the real estate of the day here was to the upside. If it turns to the downside, we'll be trending again to the downside. And we can rely on this target. Now, we get one and two. We don't get three until way over here. Three over, right over there, all right? All right? But here we had one, two, three lower highs. You see that? And that tricks traders up a lot. All right? Because what they'll try to do is, is they'll try to attach this on here, and you can see what's wrong with that trend already. Can't possibly be that. All right? So there you go. All right? Let's do another one here. Let's just go back in the past on the same currency. I'm up on a 240 chart. Remember, there are no trends uh, um, uh, below a 240 chart. All right? So here's a pretty good one right here. All right, now, here's your problem. You can see real quickly, if, if you were trading over here, let me scroll this over here. You can see real quickly that that can't be the trend. It can't be. You'd have to go back to here. All right? See that? And they will adjust trends all the time. All right? So this trend comes off of here, right here. There's two points, and we're going to attach it right there. All right. So here we have proves the heart line, proves the heart line on support, on resistance, 10 to 4. All right? Pretty easy to see that. So this breakout is a big sideways move. All right? <clears throat> This is why you can't trade a moving average crossover, right? Because it only trended there. All this was sideways. You see that? All right. So then they get in position again to go to the downside. Once they do this, all right, I can now trend this to the downside, but I only have two working part points. I have from here over to here. And I come down the lowest chart and come back here like this. It's not there. It's got to be further back. Is it there? No. Nope. Is it over here? It's right there. All right. Now, when I stop, I have it anchored on support. I have it on resistance. Do they know the heart line? Do they know the heart line? Do they know the heart line? They do. All right. So when I have this done and I make the turn up here, okay, this is the overall trend. This is the real estate of the day right there. All right. So, and you can see they need a nice move. Now we come back up to the top. Okay. This will be number three. If they make the turn here, all right, you see they're they're having trouble here, but we don't change this trend because they're proving to us that this is this is still in play. Look at that. All right? Now, once they do that, then we're done. All right? So, all down here, here's your opportunity. Real estate of the day, real estate of the day, real estate of the day. That's it. Now, advanced traders can trade this stuff. All right? Those are ABC corrections, but you need to be an advanced trader to trade uh, uh, counter trend. What happens to a lot of traders, though, is they think, like the, the old lady and the, uh, and the uh, young lady, they think that's a trend, 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 and they think that's a trend, and they're all wrong. <laughs> all right? Three points, that's a channel inside a trend, that's a channel inside a trend, that's a channel inside a trend. These are corrective moves to keep the trend in play. All right? Do one more. Let's go over to uh, the euro. I'm not a fan of the euro, but we'll take it here. So I'm up here in a 240. We can see that we're making higher highs and higher lows. Okay, so we know that we're trending, right? We don't have to go way back here. All we care about is what they're doing now, right? Can I get a trend on this piece right here? So if I go back here, you can see right here, there's the low point, and if I go right across these bottoms right there, I get three points right there. One, two, and three. And now I got the highest candle right there. Initially, I would have gone over to here, right? That's where I initially gone. But then when they put these above it, I have to adjust the trend. So I come out here to this one, right? You can see there's a resistance there. There's a support there. Now the question is, is it is it at least eight to two? Less than eight to two? Yes, it is. And do they know where the heart line is? 
Well, they knew the heart line right there, they knew the heart line right there, they knew the heart line right there. See, so now I can count on that trend, right? So, and, and the real estate of the day right now is to the downside. I'm not interested. I'm interested in that move. Why did that move go? Because it's a move with the trend, right? Corrective moves are usually short. Okay, when it comes back down here, there it is. Do we get a bounce? All right? Sideways move. Okay, now this is a pole. You all learned the pole in the, in the New York room. There's a pole which tells us we're going up. All right? So there it is. Bam. Right up. Where do they do? See, this point back here, right here, told them to exit there. This point back here told them to exit here. You see that? All right. Now, I had one, two, three touches here. They knew the heart line all in here, all in here, all in here, all in here. So if they come back down and turn up the upside, I leave the trend on. I still go with it. All right. So now they've broken the trend and all of a sudden now we're going back to the downside. All right. So now we would go, oh, OK, we're going to the downside. OK, I got that. I'm going to go across these all this preponderance evidence of these tops right here. Why? Because of the angle. If I go up here, it's too it's too flat. I come down here and I do this. Do they know the heart line? Well, guess what? I'm anchored on a support. I'm anchored on resistance. There's the heart line proven right in there. All right? So I can go with that trend to the downside. And you need to remember that you're constantly adjusting trends, folks. Constantly. All right? So when they come back up, make the turn. That's a lower high. One, two, three. Now I can adjust this trend. All right? I'll adjust it. To go to the downside and this time i'm coming across here and back over here why am i doing that because as you can see the preponderance of evidence tells that as two i got one i got two i got three and now i got four four points there's my opportunity to the downside with the real estate of the day all right and that's where we currently are so right now we would be looking to short the euro aussie right now to the downside. I thought it was a Euro dollar. Sorry, it's a Euro Aussie. All right, so that's how it's done. Don't forget, what do we got to have? All right, what we got to have is anchored on a support, anchored on a resistance, less than 45 degree angle, less than 45 degree angle, which is, uh, excuse me, 10 to 4 down and 8 to 2 up, down, up. All right, and they got to prove they know where the heart line is. All right. There's the opportunity to the downside. If the real estate of the day gets in line with this trend to the downside, there's your trade right there. But that's what will help you immensely in doing trends. By the way, there's a bonus video below this one. You might want to watch that one also. Okay. Trends look very easy, but guess what, folks? They're not easy. They're hard. Hope that helps you.